What's it like where you've been getting back in the swing of things after uh, the time you missed? Um, it feels back to normal, I would say. Um, I know when you take time off, obviously it takes a little bit to get back, but um, you know, if you're doing your job when you're taking rest or out, then you're making sure that you're scouting pitchers, you're thinking about um, game plans and thing like, things like that, which I think is one of the hardest things to do um, offensively. So then once you get your swing going, it's kind of just riding a bike. Um, but it's fun to be back and uh, just the energy and getting vocal again. I think, you know, I'm excited for this series, especially because it's kind of leading up into that. So, um, yeah, I feel good. As a leader, what's it like when, as a leader, <laughs> as a leader, what's it like to see the younger players and maybe players playing different positions get reps and just see them perform at different in different roles? What's yeah. Like? Um, honestly, I think this team is probably the most um, universal. I would say just with people, literally everyone being able to play everywhere and at any moment. Um, I know Coach says that a lot that she feels comfortable with anyone out there. So. It's cool to see young ones, but also even uh, veterans who are playing positions maybe that they haven't in the past, but doing it uh, confidently and um, humbly, being able to do that for the team, that's definitely something that makes our team super unique because people aren't complaining about the positions that they're in. They're just taking it, um, owning their roles. If it is in the dugout, they're owning that role, but it's cool to see young ones step up, and even if it's late in the game, they get their opportunities, and they're, they're doing everything they can to knock the ball down um, see pitches, you know, have good at bats. That's all you can ask of them. Chris, it looked like you really got your swing together at Iowa State, did you? I mean, it looked like you were swinging the bat well. Yeah, I felt super smooth. Um, seeing good pitches and hitting them hard, and that's kind of how you simplify it. So I think it was a great weekend to do that um, and to just feel super confident at the plate. Grace, can you describe what it's like to ramp up this weekend when you play Texas? I know you want to stay even keeled and not go high and low and stuff like that, but when you play Texas and play them in Oklahoma City. Yeah, um, I know it can get very emotional when you have that sort of atmosphere around you. You know it's um, Red River rivalry kind of thing. That's what you dream of when you're young, all those rivalry games. But um, I think it's important to stay neutral and know that we can bring passion, but also um, just kind of keep it under control to where – Good innings come, yeah, you celebrate it, but you get back down to neutral, and then you get ready for the next uh, half inning. But it's going to be cool with um, the huge atmosphere at Hall of Fame Game 1. That's going to be super fun, um, kind of World Series feel. So I'm, I'm excited for that and for um, the newcomers to feel that and experience that now um, and then just prepare that for the rest of the series and then the rest of conference and season. Is that Talk your about jobs to kind of as a captain and as a sixth-year senior or whatever to – keep everybody level and is that a new thing for you to not allow others to get too excited or too down or whatever? Yeah, I think as a leader, it's important to feel your team and understand how they respond. That's something that this team responds differently um, and just how they are. I know each team's different. So I think it's important to know when they when they do get excited or frustrated, you know how to bring that back to neutral. So um, it's cool just to have all the different personalities, but to know which ones kind of need that um, reminder, but also which ones just feed off of that and that energizes them. So I think it's very unique person to person, but as a team, um, um, you have to make sure that you are that kind of that neutral um, voice and passion, but but still bring that passion. You, you talk about that environment uh, at, at Hall of Fame, and obviously it'll be a little bit different uh, this weekend. But what do you remember from maybe your first time in that environment? How much different is it from what you faced to that point, and, and how beneficial can it be for, like you said, some of these newcomers to get to experience a little bit of it? Uh, before you know, getting open Yeah. I think my freshman year, I don't know if we ever played up there until Big 12 tournament. I'm not sure. I don't remember. Um, but all I remember is at the World Series, I'm sitting there just in awe and kind of not, not scared, but just nervous because of how many people are all around you. And it's gotten to a point, I'm, I'm blessed enough to have been there enough times to be kind of humbled by how many people are there, but also just, you know, take it in and and soak it in, but also it's it's the same game. It's You're between the white lines and um, you're competing your tail off. So I think having that experience is awesome to have that under my belt and just to remind the newbies that, 
you know, it's, yes, people are here to watch you and, and why not let that just kind of, kind of keep you calm and know that they're watching and they're excited to be there, same as you are. Grace, how, how, how much did the non-conference schedule this season really help prepare you guys for what's about to happen? Yeah, it was one of the toughest uh, preseasons, we, as we call it, um, just kind of getting those top 25 teams to play us. And I think that was something that um, allows us to elevate our game early on um, instead of just kind of riding up to that point of conference. So, um, I mean, that first weekend we had tough opponents, and I think that tests us in our preparation. But ultimately, if we're playing this t tough competition all the way through the season, um, that should allow us to grow constantly um, and just continue to – elevate our game when they when they elevate their, theirs. And I think Serena Williams had a cool kind of, I think she, a quote or a video about when she plays, everyone's going to play their best against her. So no matter who we're playing, I think it's cool that we get their best. And uh, the rest of the season, that's how, that's how it's going to be. And we're excited for that because we're, we're still growing and getting better. Grace, who is this program's main rival? When we think about Oklahoma State, we think about Texas, the history of UCLA. Does this program have a main rival? I don't know. I know like OU fans would, would pick their own, and I think everyone kind of has their own experience um, from sport to sport or from, you know, hometown OU fans to another. But honestly, I, I love playing good competition. So whoever is going to, you know, come, come at us like we're excited to play them, I think that's a rivalry in itself. So whoever it is, whether it's, you know, Coming, they're they're coming back from a game that we had with them last year. That's that's another another chance for I would say a rivalry. But honestly, anyone who's who's coming at us with that mentality that we do, that's the best competition. That's what we want. What do you remember most from playing them last year in Oklahoma State? Either a play or a moment or anything like that. Um, I know. I mean, I always remember special moments with Texas, just because um, <clears throat> you know. It's that sooner bred, sooner born kind of thing that you always want to uh, have fun with those series. So I think last year um, during the World Series, obviously we got to play them twice. And, uh, you know, I remember turning a double play with TRA. Um, I, I don't even remember home runs anymore because my our girls just go off. So uh, it's cool to see TRA, Jossie, um, Hanson, Jada, all those highlights of just – you know, them doing their thing. So it's cool to kind of watch those back, but also focus on what's ahead. We don't need to think back on what we did, but um, just excited for what's to come. And, you know, they're a new team, we're a new team. So kind of looking ahead is what we're doing. It seems like every time you all play that Hall of Fame in the last couple of years, Alyssa uh, comes through in big ways. What What is it about her and her demeanor, her, her personality maybe, that uh, her makeup that uh, helps her excel in those kind of situations? Yeah, she's just a straight competitor. Um, I think when things are thrown her way, she handles it very passionately but confidently. And, you know, in, in big moments, she's going to bring that fist pump and we know that big – you know, excitement that she gets after it with. And, um, you know, I don't even I don't even think specifically Hall of Fame, but any big game, I know that she's going to have a clutch play. She's going to give it everything she's got. Um, so I just love her enthusiasm and passion and what she brings to the game because it's cool to be beside her um, now playing with her. And um, instead of just being behind me, I can't see what goes on behind me. I mean, I love when I'm next to her, seeing her uh, get feisty and um, all of that. So I'm I'm excited for this season with her and, and just all the big games that we have coming and uh, just watching her just excel at that high level. And what kind of growth have you seen from her from, from last year to this? Oh, yeah. Um, she, I mean, with her, with her passion comes um, sometimes, you know, things could get big, but I've seen her really settle down and make those big moments smaller and just stay under control. Because um, when you're at the corners, you've got to deal with bunts, you've got to deal with steals, um, shots down the line. And I've seen her stay really composed in those big moments. She gets excited afterwards, but to make those plays, she stays super um, simple and kind of just that neutral um, in the moment that has allowed her to have those big moments. Kind of a fun question. I've been asking your teammates. I want to ask you the same one. Is why number three? Why why number 
Why do you pick your number? Yeah, that is a, that's a fun question. Uh, I love that. So I always grew up a Jeter fan. So I was always number two growing up. Um, and then when I came here, Sid Romero was two. So I was like, hey, Sid, like, I was, I was a freshman. I didn't have any, like, okay, she's amazing. She's a stud. I thought, oh, I'll just take your number after. But then I realized you can't take Sydney Romero's number. So then I was like, okay, I, I played basketball in high school, and I was number three. And I was number three for the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Um, and just that kind of reminder, and I've stuck with, with it. And um, I just love that reminder on the field. Um, and I also just, you know, it's one more than two. So kind of a little uh, little reminder for both. Thanks, Grace. Thanks, Grace. Thank you, Grace. Thanks.